Hello friends, welcome to another video of Zeta Axis and today we will discuss about thermohaline circulation. Now the word thermohaline is in itself is made of two words. The first is thermal and the second is haline. So we know that both increase or decrease in temperature as well as increase and decrease in salinity can change the density of water and therefore this thermohaline circulation is density driven circulation. This is a single large scale mixing of water of all oceans and therefore it is called a ocean conveyor belt. It includes both surface currents as well as deep water currents. So far we have studied the Atlantic Ocean currents, the Pacific Ocean currents and the Indian Ocean currents. All of these ocean currents were only surface currents. But this thermohaline circulation includes both surface currents as well as deep water currents. So some part of the water is transported through surface current and in some part the water is transported through deep water current. It is also called meridional overturning circulation. And the reason for this is that for most of the part this circulation flows in the longitudinal direction. And it takes around 1000 years for one cycle of this circulation to complete. So you can see that it takes a lot of time and this is a very slow circulation. Now we know that in oceans when the wind flows over the ocean water, it applies a dragging force on the topmost layer of water in the oceans. And because of the friction, this topmost layer moves along with the wind. Now because of friction between the first layer and the second layer of water, the second layer of water will also move along with the first layer of water but with a reduced velocity. Similarly, subsequent layers will also move but they will, their speed will be reduced as we go deeper in the ocean. We can see over here the velocity profile, the highest velocity will be of the topmost layer and subsequently the velocity will decrease and it will come to a point that the velocity will be zero. So we can see here that the wind causes motion in ocean water only in the topmost layers. Only up till certain depth, generally this depth is around 3 to 400 meters. Rest of the water is not affected by wind. So these all region where the wind is able to move the water is called surface current. And this surface current moves only 10% of the ocean water. These are the examples of surface current. We have already studied all of these currents earlier. Now the thermohaline circulation includes both surface currents as well as deep water currents. Now let's try to understand the basic principle behind the thermohaline circulation. Here we can see that on one side there is equator and on the other side there is this pole. So when the surface current they bring water from the equatorial region, it cools down when it reaches to the polar region. The reason why it cools down is first the temperature in the polar region is much lower compared to the temperature in equatorial region that is low ambient temperature in the polar region. Second is evaporative cooling. So when the water comes and it travels this much distance towards the polar region, there is evaporation of the water from this current and because of this evaporative cooling, the temperature of this water decreases. And third is brine rejection. The brine rejection occurs when ice is formed in the polar region. The seawater from which this ice is formed includes a lot of salts. The ice rejects this salt into the seawater by a phenomena called brine rejection. And because of these three regions, the density of the water increases when it reaches the polar region. Now we know that dense water sinks. So this dense water will sink to the deeper parts of the ocean. Now here, there are deep currents which carry almost 90% of the ocean water. So these deep currents are very slow and they carry 90% of the water and they take them back to the equatorial region. Here, because of heating from the sun, the density decreases and therefore the water rises up again at the surface and this process continues. Now this is the basic understanding of this thermohaline circulation. Now let's try to understand what role temperature plays in thermohaline circulation. Now before understanding that, let's try to understand how temperature does mixing in atmosphere. So we can see that sun rays, they reach the surface of the earth or the ocean and then they heat the atmosphere from the bottom. We know that the sun rays which are coming are short wave rays, it is not absorbed by the atmosphere but the rays which are 
reflected by the surface of the earth they are long wave radiation and that is what heats the atmosphere therefore the atmosphere is heated from the bottom here we see that hot air is over here which is less dense and cold air is over here which is more dense and therefore this hot air will rise up in the process it will cool down and it will come back so this is how mixing in atmosphere occurs because of temperature but if we see the case of oceans it is not possible to cause mixing by temperature in this mechanism because the ocean is heated by sun rays the topmost layer is the hot water while the cold water lies in the lower region now there can be no mixing because cold water is denser and hot water is less dense so a mixing cannot occur so this mechanism by which mixing occurs in atmosphere by the convection cell does not occur in the oceans so we have seen that temperature in the traditional way does not cause thermohaline circulation as it causes in the atmosphere now let's see how temperature causes thermohaline circulation temperature mainly helps in thermohaline circulation by changing the density here is the relation between temperature and density we can see that when temperature increases density decreases weight decreases water moves up and when temperature decreases density increases weight increases water moves down so this is the relation between temperature and density and this is how it makes the water move up or down now to understand this let's consider this figure where we have equator on one side and pole on the other side we see that there is a stream of water now this stream of water when moves from equator towards the polar region its temperature will decrease and the main causes are low ambient temperature the temperature in the polar region is very low and the second is evaporative cooling that is when this current was moving it experienced evaporation and therefore it cooled down so we see that the temperature of this water stream is reduced and we know that when temperature decreases density increases weight also increases therefore water moves down so this stream of water will move down in the deeper parts similarly now as a deep ocean current when this water stream will move from the polar region towards the equator region this region will receive lot of sunlight on the surface so water will be little higher in temperature compared to in the polar region so here we see that the temperature increases because of heating from sun therefore temperature will increase density decreases weight decreases and water moves up therefore this stream of water will move up now let's see how salinity and density are related we know that if salinity increases density increases weight increases water moves down while if salinity decreases density decreases weight decreases water moves up now what are the causes of salinity change salinity change can be caused by mainly these regions the first is evaporation the second is brine rejection and then there are some addition of fresh waters so these are the mechanisms by which fresh water is added to the ocean melting of icebergs rainfall as well as water brought by the rivers so by all these mechanisms salinity of sea water can change we know that if there is evaporation then the salt remains in the water but the amount of water decreases therefore the percentage of salt increases and thus salinity increases we also know that if we add additional water the amount of salt will remain same we can see here we have added the fresh water by rainfall or melting of iceberg or by water brought from rivers so now the amount of salt remains same but the amount of water increases so the percentage of salt in this water decreases hence salinity decreases the third was brine rejection where we see that when ice is formed the ice is formed from the water which contains salt but this salt is rejected by the ice by a process called brine rejection so when this salt is rejected the density of the water in the region increases and because the density of the water increases in this region the water becomes heavier and it will try to subduct into the deeper parts of our ocean so basically thermohaline circulation is caused by density variation where the density variations can be caused by temperature or salinity now let's see thermohaline circulation we have already seen the surface currents in atlantic ocean currents where 
the south equatorial current it moves over north of south america reaches the uh, gulf of mexico and from there it comes out in the form of gulf stream and then it flows and then there is north atlantic drift and here it reaches norway as well as south of iceland now in both of these regions when the water reaches its temperature is very low because of the ambient temperature the polar temperature is very less the water has also experienced evaporative cooling and moreover when ice is formed in these regions the density of the water increases so the density of water over here is higher because of uh, low temperature as well as high salinity and therefore water sinks in both of these regions now the water sinks and it goes to the deeper parts of our ocean we can see that the water descends here also water descends and now this water which has descended it flows as a deep water current we can see that this deep water and that deep water both of them combine and they flow as north atlantic deep water this atlantic deep water reaches the antarctic region it takes several hundred years for this water to reach over here now when it reaches over here there is also a circumpolar current antarctic circumpolar current which flows on the surface remember the yellow color will indicate the surface currents while the blue color indicates deep water currents so here we can see that there is circumpolar antarctic current which is flowing around antarctica now when this deep water current reaches over here there is an important phenomena which occurs over here we know that in the sea there are icebergs adjacent to antarctica now when wind blows it pushes these icebergs away from the coast we can see here that it has been pushed away and new ice is formed over here and this process repeats itself and we know when new ice is formed there will be brine rejection increasing the salinity of the water over here so this process continuously repeats this algae will be formed the winds will again push it away from the coast new ice is formed and this acts like a conveyor belt where new icebergs are formed and because of which the brine rejection occurs and salinity increases in this region and therefore the water over here becomes very high saline and it descends it is its salinity is so high that it goes below this north atlantic deep water current and it is called atlantic deep current or atlantic deep waters now there are two regions in the southern ocean where the water descends one is in weddell sea and another is in ross sea now because the water descends to the deeper parts at the surface there is a depletion of water so some water from the antarctic circumpolar current will flow over there to compensate and this cycle continues so water descends now just like there is a antarctic circumpolar current on the surface there is also a deep water current which moves on all sides or which on the circumference of antarctica so you can see by this blue color and it combines all these waters the water coming from north atlantic the water sinking in weddell sea and the water sinking in ross sea now some deep sea water from this region it will move towards the pacific region in the north now here it warms up this process is very slow it warms up it reaches the surface and then it flows through the indonesian region and it comes to indian ocean and similarly another branch of this deep ocean current it will flow to the indian ocean and it also warms up over here and rises up and now forms surface current both of these currents they combine with each other and they flow together and they come into over here in the atlantic ocean again some water from this circumpolar current also directly joins them and then they reach over here and complete the circulation so here you can see how thermohaline circulation occurs it includes both deep ocean currents as well as surface ocean currents most of the water flows as deep ocean current and it flows very slowly the time taken for whole of this process to complete is around 1000 years there are various estimates which even put this as 2000 or 2500 years so what is the role played by this thermohaline circulation and how does it affect the climate so we know that the equatorial region receives maximum amount of sunlight this yellow line increases the amount of heat received by the sun we see in the polar regions the amount of heat received is very less 
This blue color line indicates the amount of heat radiated by Earth. Maximum amount of heat is radiated here, but it is still less than the amount of heat received from Sun. While here we see that the heat radiated by the polar regions is higher compared to the heat received. So we can see that there is energy surplus and there is energy deficit. Now if this energy surplus is not spread to the energy deficit region, then what will happen? The temperature here will continue to build. Remember, we are continuously adding the energy and not releasing it. Therefore, this energy will remain here and increase the temperature. While here, we are not getting sufficient energy, but we are releasing more energy. So this region will become more and more cold. Therefore, mixing is very important. We know that the air circulations do mixing and they perform the transfer of heat from this region towards the polar regions. Similarly, surface ocean currents also do so. But thermohaline currents play a very important role because surface currents only move 10% of ocean water while deep currents they move 90% of ocean waters. And we know that water has very high specific heat that is it can absorb lot of heat inside it. So thermohaline circulation plays a major role in distributing this heat. So there are many people who believe that if the thermohaline circulation stops, the ice age will come. Now there are certain theories which oppose this idea while there are many theories which gave that there are other factors which will lead to ice age. Here we will try to understand how thermohaline circulation stopping can bring ice age. So we will try to follow this flow graph. So we know that there is global warming and if the global warming increases, temperature increases. When the temperature will increase, the polar ice will melt. When the polar ice will melt, we have a lot of fresh water added to the polar sea. Now when the fresh water is added, we know salinity in the polar region will decrease. Now we know that water descends over here. But if the salinity decreases, the density will not decrease and therefore this descending water will stop. So we will not have a water descending in these regions. And this will break the thermohaline circulation. Now once the salinity decreases, we will see that water will not sink in the polar regions and thus thermohaline circulation stops. And because of stopping of this thermohaline circulation, heat distribution from equatorial region to the polar region will become very slow. Now we have already seen that there is energy surplus over here and there is energy deficit. Now the mixing is not occurring or occurring at a very slow pace. So we know that in polar region, more amount of energy will be released than received. And therefore, this region will become more and more cold, while this region will become more and more hot. Now as the temperature drops over here, we will see that ice will be formed. So we can see here that cold increases in the polar regions and ice cover increases. So the situation could be something like this as shown over here. The ice sheets will start to move south because it is releasing large amount of energy and it is receiving very small amount of energy. So this is how some people believe that thermohaline circulation if stops, we will be into ice age. I hope I was able to explain this thermohaline circulation. If you have any doubts, please ask in the comment section and we will try to resolve it. If you like our channel, then please subscribe and share with your friends. And if you like what we are doing and want to contribute to it, then use the QR code given over here. Thank you. Thanks for watching the video.